Hey guys, Mo Morales here with Omar Gonzalez. You forgot our intro. Hey guys, welcome to the Mo and O Photo Show. My name is Mo Morales. And I'm Omar Gonzalez. And we're here in the middle of nowhere to bring you some good face-to-face, less time-splitting, no Skype messing up, oh my Mo God. and O time. We're together, buddy. All right. All right. Well, elbows. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. So uh, we decided to, those of you that are just listening to the audio, we're actually together for the first time in months. In 3,000 years. It's it's official. We, we've we reunited. The band's together. <laughs> Stop calling off the, the tour. It's, it's not over yet. We're here. We're here. But it's funny. The Where we are is ridiculous. We are actually in the middle of nowhere. We're in an industrial area of our, our world. <laughs> It's a combination of middle between his place and my place. And when we got here, there were like cops everywhere. And we're yeah, like, this must be like a drug area. So, so. we're like, uh, they're going to arrest us because they think we're pimping. <laughs> totally. This is a good pimp location in the middle totally of nowhere. Was. I was like, yeah, when I, when I saw the cop, I'm like, oh, if I ever had to sell drugs, this is where I would go. <laughs> this is the spot. <laughs> yeah. I need my fix. I'm going to go down there. This is perfect, actually. It, it really is. It's nice. It's relaxing. We can watch the sunset from a distance. You know, we should be shooting. It's, it's funny. It's like golden hour. It is. I'm like, well, I got my camera with me, as you can see. I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, and maybe we should talk about that today. I mean, uh, we should talk about uh, when to shoot because you and I lately have been going out during some good times. Yeah, so basically we always – I follow the – you know what? Actually, that's a big fat lie. I was about to tell everybody. I was about to tell you that I follow the golden rule, whether it's in the morning or night. No, I actually, I, I'll go out and shoot at any time of day. I love to shoot, period. But lately, as Omar was saying, I've been getting up. Well, actually, I'm not sleeping well. So I've been getting dressed at uh, super five o'clock in the morning and going to different spots that I know I'll get a good sunrise with, yeah. the, with the cityscape background. You know, going to the same spot, it's not something I do often, but how nice is it to go to the same spot and just see how it differs throughout the day sunrise sunset exactly same build like we were in weehawk in new jersey right across from new york and you and i've been doing cityscapes which is really relaxing it is it really you is. landscape photographers forget you man yeah cityscapes. screw you <laughs> get some real shoes on <laughs> no <laughs> i'm kidding yeah i'm yeah. so jealous of those guys oh my gosh especially then they go into photoshop and do another level of magic which is a whole different story but anyway but yeah with the cityscapes it's i think it's so relaxing because first of all uh, with, with everything going on there's less people than normal out there right yeah and then two you feel as weird as it sounds maybe you'll agree with me maybe you think i'm yeah mo is crazy i feel like it's my wilderness like it's my landscape it's Absolutely. like my my world and my terrain i'm trying to capture the moving beach beast which is which is actually the sun yeah yeah you know? yeah i and, love that oh man and then you know putting it on a tripod and 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 doing some long exposures as long as you can i, I you it's, know it's you're making photographs you're not just taking you're making you're thinking you and, have something in your head yeah. And you're hoping you could translate it into, you know, out there. Yeah, exactly. You're making it. Maybe if you don't have a cityscape near you, uh, you can translate that to something where just you can go to the same location. A barn. <laughs> <laughs> you rural listeners out there. If you got a barn out there, listen, exactly what Omar's saying. But yeah, I, I think a lot of times we're trying to chase different photographs. And if you just try to capture the same photograph and work it, I think it would it would make you much better. I, I get a lot of people who ask me, can you look at my work? Or can you, what, what do you think of this photo? And I notice right away, the it's lighting. taken at noon. Oh, okay, yeah. The light. The because lighting. you don't know when you first start. You know, you go out and, and the colors are so bright and beautiful at 1, 2 p.m. That's what time you think it's perfect when the sun, whenever all the colors are perfect. When yeah. you don't realize that the colors are not actually perfect, they're technically muted. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you don't know that. You don't realize that overcast will give you the perfect color You know, look, you know? Now I'm going to play devil's advocate because oh today we went to uh, Clinton, New Jersey. Have you ever been to Clinton, New no, Jersey? No, I misread that. I misread that. I thought you said Clifton. I'm like, what's the big deal about Clifton? <laughs> We're in Clifton right now. I know, ain't no big deal. <laughs> it's a historical like 1700s, 1800s. Oh, I didn't know The that. homes are so old. They have those like colonial porches and just beautiful but we went out during the worst time of day and i had to think like you know when you go out in new york there's always one side that's in shade right so you just ignore the other side yeah, i got it yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what i did here in in uh in clinton i was about to say clifton i went to you know chevy's <laughs> <laughs> good times uh i i tried to find the shady part of the street and what's cool about that is the sun hits the sidewalk and just gives you enough light, you know? There's reflections off the window. 
I did that, and also um, sometimes you just have to shoot in the sun, and I did exactly, that too. Exactly. Listen, yeah. that's the beautiful thing about street photography that you can. It's forgiving. Yeah. It's forget. It's not a portrait session. Yeah. It's not a family. You mean session. cityscape, not street photography, but well, cityscape. Well, you're talking. If you could do either one. Yeah. Like they both in this in this avenue, they're both forgiving. Yeah. If you're doing a cityscape. You can get that that the harsh contrast, and you'll be fine. If you're doing the same thing with street, twelve o'clock, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's you fine. Know? Yeah, it's even preferred by some photographers yeah, exactly. to get a really beautiful kind. Con- you said street photography. I got all like nervous. Like, oh god, because that's the complete opposite of the cityscape. You know, the cityscape. You're on the streets, or you're across the river, and you're just making. You're thinking prints. I don't know if you've tried this. Have you tried to take one of your wider uh, images and just make it like a, a pseudo yes. pano? Yes. How cool is that? It's always cool. Yeah. It's always cool. In New York City, the skyline is perfect for that. Totally. Because it, you have so much sky and so much water, mm-hmm. but just to, to yeah, su- I like the pseudo exactly. pano. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I had a print like that for years, and then I moved, and uh, I put something through it. I'm like, I guess I'm not going to keep that one. <laughs> uh, but that was it. That was exactly it. I mean, it, you, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be a skyline. You could do that with so many things that, 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 you took a nice big wide photo of just compress it take the, take the top and the bottom take off take the top and the bottom off and see yeah. what you got see you what know? you got see i i love that because um i did it with a vanilla wafer once like and no one had idea what it was They're like oh that's such a cool abstract oh, picture oh i thought you meant the actual <laughs> i took a picture with my <laughs> a macro a picture of a wafer not yeah wafer. remember the old tamron 90 millimeter macro I, I used to have with my nikon days yeah. but anyway i took a, a macro of a, a vanilla wafer Cut the top and the bottom off, printed it, and no one knew what it was. Like, yeah, that that's is cool. so abstract, dude. What is that, man? Yeah, that's a cool thing to do with a macro lens. Yeah. I I know there's actual ways to, you know, you can get a whole tripod head that um, will give you a, a you know, because if you just take a bunch of pictures with a pano, mm-hmm. they don't stitch great together. No. Is there wolves? I heard. <laughs> I heard something, too. The New Jersey <laughs> devil, yeah. yeah. We're going to be gone. We'll miss you. <laughs> You Sorry. know, I wrote to you and I said, you know, I have this little spot. We might be murdered. Here. But the sound will be awesome, he said. That's what he said. <laughs> and you know what? And me, I'm like, okay, sounds good to me. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. We're we're here and uh, we start to set up the tripods in this nicer spot. But the wind, <laughs> like, like and we're like, damn. So we're, right in front of us, there's this truck right here. We're awesome. Listen, we're doing this for you and for us. All right. Yeah, man. I, I actually miss podcasting, you know, like this. Me too. It's fun. It's relaxing. It's it's a it's a relief. It is a relief, and it's good to uh, actually speak because during this pandemic, I've been you don't really talk to anyone, you know. No, I mean, if it wasn't for my job being on the oh, phone yeah. all day, I wouldn't talk to anyone. <laughs> I would look at my dog, and he's like, "No, I gotta go." He's like, "No time for me either." Listen, I will tell you something that I tried this Saturday for the first time, and I'm very excited for the future. I did, for the first time, hybrid video and photo coverage. Ooh. Just randomly, a client, you know, because a lot of the mitzvahs that I'm doing, those of you that don't know, I shoot, uh, you know, mostly bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, but a lot of events have been canceled. And uh, most people are doing them in their backyard. Mm -hmm. And what I'm finding is they're very intimate, the backyard mitzvahs. And people are more relaxed. There's no stress. The, everyone has beautiful backyards there in the neighborhood, so they, they're conducive to great events. And it's funny, the kids are better DJs than some of the DJs I was I've ask been you, to. What's up with the DJs? Like you got the really... Bluetooth speaker, okay. and man, they, the kids are, they put on what they want, you know? Right, exactly. And I haven't heard Uptown Funk yet. Awesome. <laughs> that's like that's a that's a win. That's a win. Let me ask you a question. Do the do the kid DJs blast it so you can't hear anything? No, or? no, no. It's like a big Bluetooth speaker, okay. kind of like a you know. I just don't get that. Why do DJs have to blast things at these events so loud? It's if you're a DJ, they can't hear let us know in the comments. Why must it be so loud that no one could hear anything yeah, yeah. other than <laughs> yeah, old totally. man talk? Sorry. <laughs> so my client, this backyard mitzvah, uh, didn't want to hire a videographer, mm-hmm. you know, but they wanted at least a little movement and video coverage. Do I do something like that? And I went first. I was like, I don't do that. And I think it opens up a good lesson of try to get out of your comfort zone, you know, because covering a mitzvah now is so secondhand. Mm-hmm. So I started to like kind of percolate a little and i'm like hmm i could do it i'm glad you said that but finish your point and then i'm yeah so i set up my sony a7 III. it has two custom functions Mm -hmm. one was super slow-mo 1080p and the other one was 24p 
1080. Right. Um, so I was shooting just regular video, or I could make it slow mo, and then I go back to photos, and my settings are there. Yeah. So I, I, I just prepared myself to shoot a little video, switch my brain off, photo, photo, etc. That's awesome, and I love that you said since shooting this Misfits is like second nature to you. You don't want to do this if you're learning photography and you're starting to charge for events. Oh, you mean the hybrid shooting? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my I think you need to perfect one or the other before you can actually start, you know, trying to double dip to make extra money and then, you know, doing neither of them well. Exactly. And and I would say there was only one moment. (laughs) We got seagulls. Oh, there he is over there. So there was only one moment. You ever see the movie Birds? Yes. (laughs) That was the first horror movie I ever watched. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think Exorcist was the first one I watched, which okay, is traumatizing. Okay, it was probably the third. I watched The Birds, Psycho, and... Psycho. And Exorcist. what was that one you just said? Exorcist. Exorcist, yes. Oh, boy. I remember being five years old or six, and they had Exorcist on TV. It was on like, Channel 11, WPIX. <laughs> What's up with that? Oh, I just remember God. her head spinning and her vomiting, and yes. I, was, I didn't want to go into the room. Yes. My sister was a big horror f- uh, freak. She used to love that stuff. Now now you just go like this, and she's like... <laughs> oh, my God. But yeah, back then... Oh my goodness! Damn, when our parents traumatized us. So you've been staying busy. Things have things have been slightly picking up in in the world of photography. People, yeah, people are adapting to uh, changing up what their plans are, and I've been changing up and adapting with them. So some people want to do backyard. Some people want to save the party for another time. So um, I'm trying to. You know what's funny? What I've been dealing with gear wise is, you know, I have two camera systems because I have the Sony a7 III, but my Canon 5D Mark IV is kind of like my backup, Right, was my main camera, but don't want to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. The problem with that is I have like a spattering of overlap with lenses. Gotcha. So when the R5 and R6 were announced, I thought I was going to dump Sony, uh, but the R5 and R6 are, don't make any sense price-wise for, uh, you know, what features they have and the whole overheating thing. So, but I don't, think I want to get another Sony you know so now I'm like in a middle crossroads where I'm gonna make it work which is kind of exciting and even at the end of the mitzvah the Sony was kind of getting tired from doing video Mm -hmm. and photo all day it started to kind of get a little warm I was on my last battery of the three you know it had it had shot from 3 p.m. to almost 10 30 and and double the work it normally would do exactly so I I shut it off and I grabbed the Canon and I had fun with the Canon too shooting a DSLR DSLR is not dead by any means no no I was actually just looking at the D6 this morning Oh, the Nikon yeah. D6. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it was announced this morning, but I happened to be. I got a coupon. I got a coops. Oh gosh, I don't got, got a, a DSLR. You know? no, I'm not. I don't okay. want. I don't want one. First of all, the the D4, the the D3, four, five, and six are always the behemoths, right? They're yeah. like they're like the the sport ones. The one K. What is it called? The one the one D. <laughs> yeah, the the what the Canon one D. Whatever. Mark Niner. So they're always like ultra huge anyway, and and this was like sixty three thousand, sixty three hundred dollars. I'm like, yeah, no, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, but I was thinking because I also have been picking up work lately. I had semi retired, but friends and family need shots and stuff taken care of, and I'm like, I'm not gonna do it for free. So I charged, you know, a price. I got back in the game, and I and I got that urge of, do I want to do this more? And I want to start taking more work and stuff. I would say it's so funny you have this camera around your neck. Esta cosa. <laughs> because I. I saw Taylor, you know Taylor Jackson? He shoots hybrid. That's where I got the idea that I could shoot hybrid photo and video. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who Taylor Jackson is, he shoots Nikon, he shoots Sony, he shoots Fujifilm at his weddings. He's a great wedding photographer. He has a bunch of courses, but he shoots hybrid coverage and he's getting the money that would go to a videographer because he can do it. He could just switch video and he gives like a five minute highlight film. And I think that's all people need nowadays. Yeah, because the days of sitting with your family watching a two-hour wedding video. That's not happening, With the man. VCR acting up and you got to fix the tracking. <laughs> the tracking. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we're old. Yeah. <laughs> so those days are done. I think not only because it's it's time-consuming, but the, the the kids of today, which are the... Uh, which are becoming the adults, adults the moms. Don't have that mind sp- that, 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 sp- that span of time in their brain that they're re- ready to dedicate to this. I know. I think the hybrid shoot is going to be the way to go. And uh, people can have the whole movie on their phone, three to five minutes, and it exactly. shows everything, exactly. the, whole, the whole event. So instead of b- bothering me with your wedding for four hours, you just bother me for 30 minutes and I'm good, or 15 exactly. minutes, whatever it is. I, I had a thought, and I forgot it, right when I mentioned Taylor Jackson. Oh, 
the Fujifilm X-T3, that he used it for an event. Um, and if you don't know John Branch either, he does. He uses only Fujifilm right. for wedding, mm -hmm. and his images are beautiful. Um, and it motivated me to to try to bring the Fujifilm to jobs. And I think it could start being my backup camera to the Sony, and then eventually uh, just bring it along for portrait sessions instead of bringing the heavy Canon. Yeah. Uh -huh. I could shoot Fujifilm. The it, portraits are so beautiful from that. And you already have a footprint developed of how to do it. You start it with your Canon, and you slowly would bring the, the Sony here and there, the Sony here and there. Exactly. The Sony got phased in slowly exactly. until and, and it And you could worked. do the same exact thing. Yeah. You know, the only problem is you're going to have to carry three bodies for a while. <laughs> no, no, no. Three I, bodies. <laughs> I don't think so. Let the I, bodies hit the floor. The, the only thing I'm not confident with with the Fujifilm is using flash at an event. Like right. sh shooting, because I usually use a multiple three lights, you right. know. And that's slow with the Fujifilm, the, the lighting and the sync speed and high speed sync. Uh, it's clunky. So that I'm not great with. But I will recommend to people that if you are changing systems, do what Mo said. Just phase it in. Phase it in slowly. Um, when I started with the Sony, I was only using it for like the beginning of an event. And mm. then I would put it away and rock the Canon, which was second nature. And then it's funny. I started using Sony so much that one time the Sony crapped out. It like also like went blank, and I had to shoot the Canon. Um, oh no, I know what happened. The Sony fell, and the flash that was on top of it Ooh. cracked. Ooh. But I couldn't get it off the Ooh. camera. <laughs> it was like a cheap young yo, oh, yeah. and it was stuck in the cold shoe, and I didn't have like what I needed to get it off there. So I, it was like during a key moment, I threw the Sony, grabbed the Canon, and then like muscle memory forgot. Like mm. <laughs> swirl this way, no, the other way, the other way, the other way. No, that's what but, uh, sucks. came back to me. It was awesome. You should. Practice, practice, practice. What Omar's saying is a good point. If you can afford to keep the other system while you're phasing in the new system, some people have to sell their old yeah. to upgrade to the new, which is fine. Just keep it in mind, like you said, if you could, if you can buy your new system while still holding on to your older system, you could easily gently work your way into becoming a master of the new system instead of doing. Yeah. When, my first, my first shoot with the Sony. Uh, I, I, I got rid of the Nikon and um, I got I had the Sony. I kept them both for a while, but I wasn't I didn't have any work. Yeah. So yeah. I would shoot with both for fun to practice. But like any person who's done anything, practice is not the real thing. Yeah. yeah so yeah. when I got, did my first event with the Sony, luckily it wasn't my event. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's you a know? good thing, too. Like yeah. you should second shoot for that's someone. exactly what I said. I said I heard our friend Georgie yeah. was at, was doing a engagement party. And I said to him, "Can I come and just shoot?" That's awesome. I said, "No, I'm not charging you anything. I just want to. I don't. I don't remember. I don't think I charged you anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I just went and I shot. And no, I didn't shoot. I didn't charge him. I, I just shot, and everything I got, I gave him, whether it was crap or not. And it was my first level of experience with it. That's cool. And it was very nerve wracking because. Nikon lenses spin a different direction. Yeah, yeah, it's totally. Uh, the, the, obviously, the monitor, the dials are all different. So, that's it, a great idea. If you if you do sell the other systems and get on a new system, then definitely you know tag along with someone else. Yeah, you know. And I think the dream really is to have one system. Uh, for me personally, it's just cameras. I feel are in this transitional period. You know, even Sony cameras have been getting better, better, better. Uh, the Sony a7 III needs better EVF, mm -hmm. better screen. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the a7 IV is going to be a great camera. And I made uh, it's funny, it's the first week, the first month ever that I've thought about dumping Canon. Wow. Can you believe that? Yeah, it's really hard to hear. Because it's, <laughs> I'm either going to wait for the next EOS R7 mm -hmm. or the, the R5 Mark II. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't really want to wait for those. I don't want to spend four thousand dollars on something that I don't need. Exactly. You know? Exactly. I'm very excited after uh, everything I've seen with the A7S III. Yeah, it's. Body. I'm very excited f because the A7R4, pretty decent. It, it, R4 is a great camera. Yeah, it's, it's just too many decent. megapixels, but yeah. That's my problem. So then seeing the R4 come out in all its potential, seeing the S3 come out with all its potential, I'm excited for the a But wait, let me ask you, bro. You ready? Damn it. What if it has a full articulating screen? Because I feel, don't you love the screen on the X-T3 that it just goes whip? And then when you shoot vertical, you can whip. 
flip it so, or you're okay with the full all over I'm not a pri- primar- I'm not primarily a screen taker outer what does that mean I don't usually take my screen out take your screen out so I don't usually flip it up I don't oh, usually okay. flip it oh to yeah the you're side. An, like a super EVF eye shooter I, I'm an eye yeah, shooter yeah. so the only times I use it are those rare occasions where I need to get really super low and at my at my age yeah 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 <laughs> I ain't getting that old boy <laughs> once no, you go down you ain't coming no, back oh man somebody better call the cops yeah <laughs> you ain't getting they're that. here no no <laughs> <laughs> drug bust oh man I, I recently did a couple of shoots that were out of my comfort zone which is again what we're talking about I did I think we were talking about time of day but <laughs> we don't care this is our podcast and we talk about everything <laughs> well bring it back to that all right go ahead so yeah you did a couple shoots so, during what time of day so the last uh three weeks i've been very busy i i done i done i did a i did done a sunrise sunset family shoot at a beach which was fun i thought i was gonna be able to use my flash system with me it was very... It's uh, too cumbersome. It was unrealistic because of the, the moving wind. around. Yeah, the sand. The sand. Ugh. Having, you know, sandbag it here, sandbag it there. So I, I ended up having to just do natural light with the with the sunset one. Nothing wrong with natural light, bro. And then a couple, uh, about a week later, I ended up doing a sunrise engagement shoot. The couple wanted to do a sun sunrise, a sunset one, but I said, first of all, the areas that we have available to us around sun, sunrise, sunset time will be so packed. Oh, There'll yeah. be a lot of people there. We won't have any guaranteed privacy in our space. We could get the same we get the same kind of light look. Yeah. In the morning, it won't be as golden. Yeah, yeah. But you will still get a nice beautiful soft look. And it ended up, you know, they ended up loving it. So the point of bringing that story up is that if you're comfortable with what you're going to shoot and what you're going to get out of it, don't be afraid to, to express your ideas to the client in a Great way point. Great in point. a way that you know what I know this is what you want but I can make this work even better. Let me give you, oh that's a great point. That you just sparked something in my mind cuz I did the, um, a shoot where the light you know the light is so fleeting, right? Mm-hmm. You, you're doing like a sunrise shoot or a sundown shoot. It's like 10 minutes and it's so fast it changes. So I was doing a shoot of a kid. She was doing awesome. And we were about to go into Bloomfield Street of Hoboken, which is like further from the water. Right. And I took a glance back and it was kind of like still too bright. But I knew that if we walked to Bloomfield Street and started shooting and changing clothes, forget it. It would mm. be too late. So I decided to executive decision. You know more than your clients you know what, let's go to the water. And then we'll go to Blue- Bloomfield. It was super dark later. Right, but right. I could deal with that as opposed to the gold on the buildings made it so awesome. And I posted those pictures on Instagram of the kid, that, you know, like yeah. the little blonde yeah. kid. Yeah. And uh, the light was so nice. You and know? That's what it is. Again, you ha- again. this is what we're talking about all the time, confidence, right? If, if you're confident in what you're going to do, you need to tell your client in a way this is what we should do. Let's go do this instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, always convince them, like, you know what, we could still walk around and, and, and do what you want to do. Or in my case, I, it wasn't an option because um, a firefighter and a nurse, so their time shifts is like, it's either going to be this time in the oh, morning yeah, yeah, or this sure. time at night. So I was very comfortable in saying, like, listen, I could get you the same exact look you want. And they love the photos. They Gosh, how cool would it have been to do a shoot with their gear on? Like real hero shoot, man. That would have been awesome. You know what? I'm going to reach out to them now. <laughs> I'm Wouldn't gonna steal that be your awesome? Idea. Gonna, yeah, that's not a great idea. Like do some hair light in the back and have him in his like total gear. Mm-hmm. Just do one, like to get that one shot, like magazine style. That's awesome. That's it, a great idea. Good that's idea. awesome. Now, now you have a personal project. That's awesome. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this was freaking awesome. We could talk forever, man. We can. Yeah, we'll yeah, put yeah. these mic down to keep yapping. But we are going to try to get together more often. Being outside is great. The point of this episode was, number one, for us to get back together. But try to shoot. Those of you that are struggling, you don't know why your pictures are so great. Try to get up by sunrise. Get up before everyone. Actually get out there before the sun is up so you can see just that gold that blue hour you know beforehand come out always about 45 minutes to an hour before sundown and just wait and right now it's beautiful like the light is really soft it's beautiful the sun is actually gone already but the golden sky bounces off this gray sidewalk look how good we look bro we look awesome and then what omar said before is don't be afraid to go back to that same spot different times a day figure out which one works best for you 
and I'm going to come back to this spot, you know, see how many cops. That's the sound of the police. Whip, whip. All right, right guys. Thanks for stopping by. Until we see you next time, it's always a pleasure. All right, guys. See you next time. Peace.